Welcome back. You're watching In Focus, and it is time now for our Africa Health Network uh, update. And of course, Lino Madu joins us with today's story. Hi, Lino. Hello, Dimiake. Hello, everyone. Well, Zambia has rolled out a mass circumcision campaign targeting nearly 2 million men by the year 2015. The nation is aiming to reduce the spread of HIV AIDS infection in men and cervical cancer in women. Twenty-four-year-old John Fury is receiving counseling about circumcision. He says he understands the benefit of the procedure. Uh, it's got a lot of benefits. I think uh, it's safer to protect me a bit from HIV. It to protect my partner from cervical cancer somehow. Um, yeah, and I don't think the experience is that bad. It's kind of easy actually, and I advise that uh, more men should come for it. The World Health Organization says male circumcision reduces the risk of heterosexually acquired HIV infection in men by approximately 60%. In addition, medical experts say women can also get some protection from a type of human papilloma virus that causes cervical cancer, which is found in uncircumcised men. In Zambia, men are being encouraged to undergo circumcision to reduce their chances of getting infected with HIV. Statistics show that up to 80% of Zambian men are uncircumcised. Health facilities across the country are offering the procedure for free as part of a government-led campaign. It's targeting men between the ages of 15 and 49. Chipo Musiwa is a male circumcision counselor. We counsel our clients before they go into the theater and um, they are also given post-op instructions after the procedure has taken place. We, uh, all we're trying to do is to bury the misconception. It's also a, a, a package which is part of the minimum uh, package for HIV prevention. So uh, as far as we are concerned, we have a lot of clients uh, willing to come to the site to have the circumcision done. The project was initially rolled out in Zambia as a pilot in 2005. Now it's a full-fledged, large-scale program. The government sees circumcision as a cost-effective way to help reduce the HIV pandemic. Daniel Makawa, the National Circumcision Coordinator, says the campaign will be carried out in phases across the country. So this operational plan is divided into two. Yes, the first part we're calling it the catch-up phase. That will run from 2012 to 2015. So this is aimed at uh, circumcising 1.9 million males at, in an exponential fashion, starting with 198,000 this year, right to about 800,000 by the 2015. So as we roll out to that 1.9, we expect that by then the human resource will have improved, the efficiency of the program will have been in top um, form and all partners will have been on board and covering most of the areas. So far, about 185,000 men nationwide have undergone the procedure. Mothers with newly born sons are also being encouraged to have their babies circumcised early for long-term HIV AIDS prevention. But critics say the campaign in Zambia is not putting enough emphasis on the fact that circumcision will not make men immune to the disease. Experts warn that the message must go hand in hand with other campaigns like condom use and sticking to one partner. Traditionally, circumcision is not a common rite of passage in most parts of Zambia, but one tribal chief has made it his mission to encourage men to get circumcised, challenging his own tradition. Jonathan Eshiloni Mumena is the chief of the county people in Zambia's northwestern province. He is also the leader of Zambia's National Male Circumcision Advisory Council, and he explains why he has taken on this challenge. About February last year, it was February 2011, my own son, Benjamin, who was then 18, and that was my firstborn, comes to me and says, Daddy, I want to go for male circumcision. Now, that was not an easy prospect, especially for me, as custodian of our customs and culture, over people like the Kaonde, who are non-circumcising. And right from the epitome of the seat where you're supposed to advocate for culture, and who we are, because culture gives us our identity, gives us our direction, gives us our sustainability. And my own son comes up and says, Daddy, I'm going this way. It was a challenge. I began thinking. 
And that was from the time then I began to do my own research and find out what is this male circumcision. I allowed him to go. But then I knew I had a, big, a tougher battle ahead. How do I explain to the elders? How does the, 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 the community begin to embrace this? How, does, how do people look at me, the custodian of their own culture? I turned on to Society for Family Health Zambia, who gave me a lot more information. And I got to realize that it gives us 60% protection from HIV and AIDS. I think that was two very, very good news indeed. Secondly, it is not just about preventing new infections in the males. But you go further to realize that it also helps prevent cervical cancer with the spouses of the men that are circumcised. It's a double deal. And thirdly, it's about uh, remaining hygienic. And I think that it is no longer such a challenge because previously you'd think that when you're going through male circumcision, it's like you're changing and running out from your culture, looking down on your culture, turning your back on your culture. But we're doing this as a survival strategy now in the, in the face of HIV and AIDS. And I think the information I found became too compelling and too good. And I personally ended up going for the same procedure in June 2011. And then brought the debate to the village so that we have the men and women talking about it. And the debate is raging like a wildfire. And Chief Mumena's efforts have inspired countless men in his village to get circumcised, including an 82-year-old. He has also used his authority to reduce gender inequality, and he has championed safe motherhood in Zambia.